What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Retro Gamers Podcast number, I don't know, 240-something. Uh, we're kind of doing this on the fly <laughs> right now. Uh, as you can tell, because there's no video, Anthony is not here this week, but I am joined by two wonderful friends who we just had a wonderful outing uh, with each other. First, I'll introduce Mario. Hey, what's up? Wonderful, terrific, happy. <laughs> He's great. happy to be back. Happy to be back. <laughs> and of course, Jack is back. Good old Jake. Jake. Jake Jack. <laughs> I keep getting his name mixed up. You had me calling him Jack, too, because you kept calling him Jack. Jake, Jack. I apologize completely. He does this to me a lot. It's this, where does the spelling come from? It's, it's Polish. It is Polish. Yeah. Okay. So Jack's uh, the American version. Gotcha. I see the E in there. I want to see Jake. It messes Jake. everyone up. It does. Yeah. So please, no offense. None take. <laughs> so you see, now I'm confused. What do I call him? <laughs> call him. Call him Buddy. Hey, Billy. Call him Buddy. <laughs> Good old Bob. <laughs> so um, we, this might be a short episode because, A, we have things to do, uh, and B, uh, really not much to talk about other than uh, Game On. Uh, introduce Jake Jack to Game On, and um, we had a really fun time. I walked out <laughs> with a lot more than I was hoping, but uh, first, let's get, what are your thoughts what do you think of Game On? Both spots that we actually ended up going to. It's just amazing to be around like games, so many games and so many retro things, like so many Master Systems games, especially. That was amazing. Their collection's insane. I walked out with so much Master System, it's ridiculous. Larry got a workout. <laughs> He's benching 120 right now. Yes, he did. But I, I have to say, Larry, you showed incredible restraint not buying that Voltron today. Shh, don't talk about it. <laughs> so no one knows it's there. The Voltron that's not there. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, you know, as a modder, as we talked about before, you know, uh, yeah. with, with the ROMs and the hacks and everything like that, um, like, did you see anything pretty, like, did you see anything interesting or, or sure, cool yeah. There? They had a lot of repro stuff, which, and some fan based games that they uh, made physical copies of, which was fun mm -hmm. to see. But, yeah, it's good to see not only them selling old games that are really hard to get, but selling repros of those games, which are more accessible and just like seeing the love behind, like, these two guys that had for this, uh, for the retro games and, they're not doing that for the money. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. really there, and they're like... Well, the owner might. Yeah. But uh, we're talking about Tristan and Jay at the Miller Place and uh, Smithtown uh, Game On locations. Mario, um, you actually uh, piqued some interest as well heading out to the store because of your kind of re-interest, I guess you can say. Well, it's, it's certainly... It's, it's a re-interest, uh, limited, but re-interest. You know, I, I think I'm going to come to grab a couple of Genesis games, some niche games, and, mm -hmm. and really, uh, the Master System is really uh, kind of where my interest is going right now. That's what you're looking so for. So I like to find a couple of good Master System games, maybe a couple I never had played back in the day, you know, based on reputation and whatnot. And uh, what was it, Castlemania makes this power-based converter yeah. with the FM sound chip. So I didn't have that back in the day. I had to do with the Master System's ratty sound. And I like to hear how these FM chip games sound. So, you know, it's nice. You know, I grabbed the game today, Reggie Jackson Baseball, which was my uh, favorite baseball game. You're always trying to sell on. me on that. Yeah, you're going to find out. It's, it's good. <laughs> they have a home run derby in it. It's Ooh, a lot of fun. Okay, then maybe. You traded those uh, Xbox games for the... Yeah, I got, all, I got rid of all these old <laughs> Xbox One games old. that I never... <laughs> well, what is old today months. anyway? I don't even know. You know, I just bought them. I really uh, never played them, and I, I find with the Xbox I have... I'm I'm picking up a lot of Game Pass games more than yeah you do a lot of Game stuff. Pass yeah and the stuff I'm buying tends to be of the real old school stuff like the Atari Flashback games mm -hmm. their little cheap 4.99 versions of Joust and Pac Man and all mm -hmm. that like that's what I like I like to keep things simple and quick and 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 you know uh, fair enough that's that's kind of where I'm leaning as far as retro collecting is is the Genesis and the Master System and you've always talked to me about you've talked me into a lot of the Master System stuff and everything like that and sorry I sorry about that no no it's okay <laughs> uh, I mean that's where all my money went today uh, but luckily now with the analog I have the adapter for the Master System I mean I do have the original power base converter but I only got that recently and that's more of a collector's item than anything else uh, but oh it does play the card games I forgot it does. yeah yeah, oh, yeah that's no, right. the original converter does that's right yep. um because I picked up a card game today as well. But uh, I think it's pretty cool the Master System is starting to get some love. And we were talking, because you also, my regret of not bringing the recorder with me, because the conversation at lunch was phenomenal and could have been the episode, but I didn't want to pay the rights to the music that was <laughs> that was playing behind us. Yes. yes. Um, I kind of made a point to say, like, the three of us is almost like three different levels of gamers. Right. In, in a way. Like, Mario, you're very casual. 
you have you love your history of the games, you love your Genesis, your Master System, but you're finding a lot of these games on the Xbox, like you said, on the Game Pass. And you'll start to collect the Master the, System the, stuff. Let's put it the, the most current game I bought on the Xbox that's that's newest is a remake of a Genesis game, Toe Jam and Earl. Exactly. Right? You know, <laughs> well, and like true. my Very daughter true. and I, we love playing it. We laugh. <laughs> so um and then like i would say like maybe i'm next level up because i i love the history well because of this podcast uh like the history of the gaming but i'll go out i got the analog systems you know before that i was doing the hyperkin you know trying to to recapture the glory days of these systems not that i won't buy them like if they're available digital like you know like i got the castlevania collection right on switch so i'm good but saying that i'll go out and i love it so that's me, and then I like have like like a lot of the like the old like real weird stuff. I, I think in your case, it's it's very much you are a gamer, you're an enthusiast. Let me show you how to hold a microphone. Okay, I'm there sorry. There we go. I think in your case, Larry, uh, <laughs> I think you're very much a gamer, on on yeah. ab- above level than me. You're also an enthusiast in general. You like you are a collector of things. That's my but problem. Once I, I get I something seem- zoned in. I see a lot of this stuff too as investment. Like you're investing into the podcast, you're investing into the things you enjoy. You yeah, know, you know what I'm saying. So I think with I no think... return, but true. Right? <laughs> no, I got you. Might, yeah, right. And then uh, Billy over here. You know he. <laughs> I'm gonna do this the whole podcast. <laughs> you got now. his name right, <laughs> Steve. Esteban. Come on. He's a person just like you and me. Jack. <laughs> Good old Jack. Um, run home, Jack. Run home, Jack. Um, you know you. I think I told you in the store, you can't leave well enough well enough alone when nope. you purchase an old system. Can't do it. Like, you told me you modded the, the Famicom Duo, or I the did. Twin, or whatever they call it. The Famicom Twin. Yeah. Right. Like, that's great. And I love that about you. Don't get me wrong. Oh, but, awesome. like, that's your... It, and so you love the old, but at the same mm-hmm. time, you take the old and you Frankenstein it yep. to, get to, to get to the new. It, it's funny, because... Because I'm playing the old on the new mm-hmm. is what I have to do to get it to look like it used to on the old CRTs because I don't have a CRT anymore. Yeah, like we don't have room in the apartment. Like I'm limited to whatever we have now, and the OCD comes in with me remembering <laughs> exactly how this is supposed to look and feel, and it doesn't do it. So whatever I can get it to back to like what I've remember or even better than it was yeah in some cases like they fixed the mistakes that were like coming back and like you know you were talking what game was it you were talking oh, gradius gradius talking about fixing mistakes yeah right or the super mario world which i'm now going to try and play oh yeah slow down to right? find was, the slowdown say one hex yeah. and i'm not 100 percent sure it's on the switch version oh and i don't nope. even think i have an original super mario world now that i think about it no these are all these are all fan hex yeah so your, we, your super nt might be able to play probably no i meant like to find the slowdown because i don't oh. remember the slowdown oh, of super yeah, mario yeah. i remember it in gradius yep i don't with Su- you're talking super mario world right? world Ooh. world I don't remember it being as bad no, as it, it was in like Super R Type or Gradius. Type. Oh my God, Super R Type was, was ridiculous. It, 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 was, it was there. My and my brother was the Super Nintendo player, so he would know better than than I would. But uh, I, I don't remember it being as bad. I remember there were moments where it definitely like got slow, and and like you said, sometimes it helped you more than it hurt you. Yeah, you know, always helped you. Oh, a lot of people co- uh, uh, counted on it. Yep. Don't get me wrong. I still do. I, I You play those SA1 hacks, you're relearning the game because it's much harder. <laughs> yep. You know, it's funny because we were also talking about muscle memory, and I gave Anthony a hard time on the podcast when he was playing Super Mario World. Yep. And, like, he's three levels in. Not three worlds. He's three levels in, and he's forgetting how to play, and I'm screaming at the television, what is wrong with you? And then, like, I go and try and play the game again. I'm like, all right, no, I can see what he's talking about. Yeah. I can see where he may be uh, misfiring. I, feels I, off. I've noticed... There is a loss of motor skill. When it, when it Big loss to, of motor skill. I'll what, are you try kidding to me? play a shooter on the Genesis. Like, like what's what's on the mini? The Darius games, right? Oh yes, that's on the Genesis and, mini. Darius, uh, yeah. I, I will, I'll be lucky if I get to the third part of the screen. You know, you know, <laughs> without dying ten times. But if I if I play like an Atari game that's really slow, mm-hmm. like so, I, I think my my video game motor skills are reduced to that of a five year old now. So because I cannot play the. The games I used to beat like nothing to, with any sort of proficiency. I could try. Maybe I'm just not trying hard enough. Maybe I'm just burnt out. I, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of I kind of suck right now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, what, and between the, the two of you as well, because, again, I, you know, I just go nuts when I'm in game on. 
but um, like any games that maybe like you came across, just nostalgia feel. We're like, oh my god, I can't believe I totally forgot about this game or something like that. Anything come across that? When we went to Smithtown, your favorite. Sega Genesis Pit Fighter. No, oh, oh, Pit Fighter. Fighter. <laughs> it's a god all. You can it's leave. Like, so it, it's kind of like a guilty pleasure. Like it's so bad. It's like watching the room. It's so bad. It's good. <laughs> I, I did used, not. We all knew that it didn't play great when we when we played it back in the day. But my friends and I, one friend in particular, we would just have so much fun playing it and just talking the trash and reciting lines from cheesy Van Damme movies <laughs> that it became fun. And hard driving was kind of like the same thing on the Genesis. Mm, the yeah. frame rate is awful. The game barely controls. You tr you got to play it in automatic because if you try manual, you're never mm. going to move. But once you got going and you just would drive around the tracks, it was kind of like cheesy fun, like <laughs> a fun time killer. So like that kind of stuff. And uh, the good nostalgia one, which again, it might be... Not too many people are crazy about it. It's made the Shadow of the Beast. And we we looked at that once before. If you yes. hate the way I'm using this mic, I'm just... I don't have to call you out on it now. <laughs> yeah, you, you should, and I deserve I got it. Because that's why, that's why normally we would all wear headphones. It's just weird. I'm not used to this. Don't I'm get not. me wrong. Okay. No one is. Trust me, I'm forcing you into this. I feel like it's going to smack me in the face. This is all because Anthony <laughs> is on assignment. So... <laughs> this is his fault. Right? Well, totally. I'm going to blame it on him. Um, but I'm glad you guys had a good time. Uh, I'm awesome glad time. you had a blast there. Yeah, it was fun talking to Jay and Tristan. Yep, that's, honestly, that's, that's a lot. Uh, like I said, not the won't be the only time yep. there. We'll definitely be back uh, for other times. But um, you know, some other stuff we were talking about uh, at lunch. And if anything pops up in your heads, definitely speak up or forever hold your peace. Um, you know, it was funny how I was trying. To, I think I was trying to explain this to Mario, and Jack, you might have a better idea about it. We were talking about Billy Mitchell, the most evil person on the planet. Billy Mitchell. Apparently suing everyone, which that I didn't realize, yep. right? In fact, let's talk nice about him, just in case, because this is under my name and Rip, uh, Anthony's name. So, um, But we were talking about how kind of like I feel like during his Pac-Man perfect gameplay, he was like manipulating the game to the point where he was like reprogramming it live in front of you. And there's also something on YouTube, which I, I might be able to pull it up, of, you know, again, someone... As they play, I want to say Super Mario World. Might have even been the first one. Right, I don't know. Right. Literally reprogramming the game. I mean, I, like I know Mario. I'm blown away that this can be done in general. <laughs> like that you can do these hacks with your control pad. That I guess not even control pad, just pure gameplay. Just, play, just through the just through the gameplay, you can yeah. hack the game. I, I think that's wild. <laughs> I mean, this goes back to what we're talking about, right? Like, nothing's perfect. Mm -hmm. Games have bugs in them that exploit both the hardware and the software and everything else. And if you find some of these bugs and these people are coming in there and dedicating a lot of time to trying to find these micro little bugs, like even Super Mario Bros. 3, if you find some of these like glitches that people are mm -hmm. doing, it, it looks awesome. It does, yeah. Hey, you remember in Super Mario 3 that if you got on one of like the white pads and you ducked for five seconds... You'd go behind it. Was that? A oh, oh no, no, that's in the like, game. That's part that of the game. That was intentional. That's how you got the whistle, figure, the yeah. white block. Going yeah, down. right. That yep. was an intentional yep. secret. Okay. Yep. Because Super Mario Brothers Three mm -hmm. is an actual play, yep. as Miyamoto has told us. That's why oh. it looks like a play. That's why there are acts. You know, at the end of the level, the curtain in the beginning, curtain in the beginning, right. curtain at the end. Super yep. Mario Brothers Two was a dream, right? It was also because they, you know, they they reskinned a different game. Doki Doki Panic. Yep. Do you have a lot of uh, Famicom now, now that you have, I have a twin? quite a bit, because when we went to Japan, I loaded up. Oh, there you go. I'm not so, going to blame you on that one. It was fun, because it was just fun to talk to some of the people at the uh, retro game stores in Japan. Mm -hmm. Like, once they saw that you're there just because you love to be there, we oh, had some really great conversations with my friend and, like, them, and we're just talking a lot, and we got some a good haul from them. So. Any, um, any good um, uh, disc? Like for the actual disc system? Yeah, yeah. I got. I picked up both Zeldas. I picked okay. up uh, Excite Bike mm, uh, Versus. Yes. And I picked up a few other things. I that don't one's actually on remember. Switch. Excite Bike Versus. Yeah. That was all the Play Choice versions, right? Like they had a Super Mario Versus. Well, the Versus is like the arc no, not the Play Choice. They were in. They were standalone machines. Oh, okay. okay. The Play Choice was just a glorified NES, right? Yep, right with right, a different right. color palette. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's right, because the Super Mario verse had a slightly different color palette and was more difficult. Am I right? It was definitely more difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, I think it kind of merged Super Mario Brothers one and two a little bit. Um, right. And it, again, it's available on the Switch. Wow. Yep. So, there you go. Um, 
just trying to think some other stuff that we were talking about today. Uh, anything new in the world, like I, with the Mister Project or or anything hacking? Is anyone getting an N sixty four? I need an N sixty four. Not anytime soon. Jesus, nope. my brother's looking for one too. I think. I think he's going to be on the. Uh, <laughs> so I'll let I'll keep you. You might even have one. I got maybe I have one downstairs. I got to look. Maybe I don't know. Saturn and PS one are going to be the next big. Those are going to be the next ones? But the arcade scene with Hotego and like everyone else doing the crazy stuff is just amazing. So I can't wait to get my hands on that. Yeah. Oh, it's so It's going to be terrible. Yeah. I think the Voltron yeah. is expensive. Just wait. <laughs> Buy one you arcade board. You showed incredible, fun, right? <laughs> incredible restraint today. I give you a lot of you credit. Did. All right. So what happened was at Game On, I'm not going to tell you which one. I'll make you drive to both of them. But they'd have like this 30th anniversary die cast Voltron. And if you ask them about it and tell them that the retro gamer sent them to you, I will make sure that they tell you it is not available. <laughs> but it is this gorgeous metal Voltron that I want now. I'm not going to say the price necessarily. It might have already been said on the podcast, but I still don't want to say it. Just respect for Game On. I won't either. And But it is up there. And I'm telling you, next paycheck, if I show up and it's still there, it's coming home with me. That's fun. You, you just got to let your conscience be your guide, Larry. That's all. Guilty conscience. I'm like so, I was the one who pointed it out. You sure you. did, you I did jerk. not expect that reaction. You, like, you were ready Voltron. to buy it on I the was, spot. I, I, up. Voltron you is one of my... sweating. F- I saw your forehead like, dripping. Like, Voltron's one of my favorite cartoons. Again, it's what got me into the Power Rangers. Mighty Morphin, at least. Power Rangers. And, you know, again, looking at it, legit die-cast metal. Not the cheap plastic like it used to be, though I would have taken plastic. And it just looks amazing. Yeah. I, I, tell you, I remember the old one from the 80s that you would yep. connect together. It looked like it was about the same in scale. It looked like Oh, I think it was exactly size. the same in scale, yeah. That's uh, what it looked like. Yeah. It was definitely sculpted better. It was definitely made made nicer. The the head movement on the arms, you know, mm-hmm. it was a nice nice thing. Uh, but, you, you know, tremendous temptation, which I didn't think it would be, but I saw you change color you turned I, flush yeah, you started sweating i and couldn't you were shaking a little <laughs> we were you know we were a little worried about you and then you showed tremendous I, restraint drove me nuts i actually took a picture of it on my phone larry i you took know? a picture too not of me though you have a picture of me yeah no i just have a picture oh. of pieces yeah. jack my you guys. oh okay jack has a picture of me it. starting yeah. to cry <laughs> <laughs> you bums <laughs> so um it, the, the biggest shocker though was some of these games that I thought I'd just be able to pick up, how much they've skyrocketed in price. Honestly, yeah. and uh, well, this um, I don't think is anything from from game. We'll, we'll give a price range, but you know, tell them about yeah, because you've been looking for something and it kind of threw you off. Oh yeah, I, so, and preface the prices that we saw today are right on the money or less than market yeah, value. Yeah, yeah, yep, absolutely. So we went on price charting and like it was way less than market value. So. Mm-hmm. Hats off to them, and they had really great condition stuff. This was not like the torn up stuff. No, no, not yeah, not junk. No, it was not garbage. But it was a uh, what? It was a Super, Super Mario Bros. Bros. Three, three, a I, regular version, not the variant, nope. not the left hand variant or anything. I looked through my collection, and one of my friends came over. He's like, "Let's play Super Mario Bros. Three. Of, of course, let's play it." I looked for the cart, couldn't find it. <laughs> wow. And I'm pretty sure this was one of those that my mom sold to GameStop. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like died inside. So oh, we're man. trying to find one now. And the cheapest ones we could find on eBay now were 65 bucks complete in box, but they were still terrible condition. Mm-hmm. And now today or last week, they'd skyrocketed to over 140. That's insane. And overnight, that's... I've seen it happen with the yep. pop vinyls. That's yep. nuts. It's crazy. Yeah. And Price. that's condition agnostic. That's just yeah. complete in box. That mm-hmm. just means right. it has all the things. It though. has everything. I, 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 oh. So I'm not willing to pay. <laughs> no, I don't blame oh, you. That's, yeah. I, mean... I don't blame you. So, uh, but yeah, no, like I said, game on, very successful. Um, Before I know, Jack, you're going to have somewhere to go in a little bit. So before you head out, uh, I do want to mention one of the rumors. We might wrap up a little bit later, you know, after he leaves. But um, Mm -hmm. I do want to mention this. Apparently the strong rumor, nothing official by Nintendo, but the strong rumor is that Nintendo is going to be throwing some Game Boy games and Game Boy Color games onto the Switch to add to their NES library and their Super NES library. First of all, either one of you, history of handhelds, or at least Game Boys? DMG, up. Okay. Um, the I messed around with my brother's Game Boy, and I think I had a, a Game Boy Color very briefly. But I Game never Boy really, Color, all right. Yeah, I never really um, messed with too many handhelds. Besides that, nothing, huh? Tiger Electronics. The old, the old dot football game from like yep. 1981. Like, <laughs> yes. I played that a little bit. Awesome. Oh, and... Uh, 
those little old arcade things. Oh yes, 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 yes. I had, I had a, I had a Popeye and a Donkey Kong. Yeah, I had a the Donkey little ones. Kong. So pure rumor. Everyone's speculating it, but it seems to be getting a lot of traction that it might be legit. Makes sense for them to do it. It would. Don't get me wrong, because I feel like it would be next in line. A lot of people are going to say N64, but no, G Game Boy has a great lineup. And someone posted just real quick, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 15 games that would make good launch games if they do this. So just to, again, this is from at the NCS Master. I don't know who that is, but again, this is their idea of what a launch would look like, and I'm just going to read through these real quick. Uh, Super Mario Land, yep. Super Mario Land 2, Wario Land, Tetris, Kirby's Dream Land, so far those five home runs, mm -hmm. Metroid 2, Donkey Kong, which was the first game uh, to be uh, fully compatible with the Super Game Boy, and a great version of Donkey Kong, uh, Pokemon, now he's showing the Pikachu edition, but probably any Pokemon, uh, Mole Mania, Kirby's Dream Land 2, Mega Man 5, that'd be a push, because yep. that's a tough one to find anyway. Mega Man 5. Uh, the Final Fantasy Legend, Donkey Kong Land, the Castlevania Adventure, and Mario's Picross. Picross was fun. I like Picross I have, was I think the first Game Boy game I downloaded on 3DS. So, not too bad of a lineup. Not, not too bad. I'm sorry, Some I don't remember you said. Did you mention any Zelda? Was there any Zelda? No, honestly, no. actually there was. was. There was a, there Link's was, Awakening, right? which Link's, would really Link's be Awakening the one. Been the one. Right? I, I mean, they'd probably do ages and seasons, but yeah. mm -hmm. but you'd want to do Link. Well, Link's Awakening is coming out on their Game & Watch. That's true. That comes yeah. out in November. Yes. And Link's Awakening, I will put up against any console game it's as far as game. quality. Yeah. But even with these, you know, you got the three Super Mario Lands. Those work. Tetris was a pack-in game. Yep. That's how I fell in love with Tetris. The Kirby games are what they are. Pokemon is what it is. Um, I don't see them really. Tetris was a big deal back Tetris then. was huge. And this version of Tetris, mm. though simple, That's what very put fun. Game Boy on the map. Everybody, Tetris was like a... That was a... Even for the non... Game player like adults. That, that was yeah. a game I remember adults buying Game Boys for. Oh no, totally, play. yeah, totally. Oh, yeah. That was a big deal. And uh, of course, Mario's Pacross. I love the Pacross series. I fell in love way later, but I absolutely fell in love. I got the Pacross, the Japanese Super Pacross for the Super Nintendo, oh, yeah. both physical copy and it's on the Switch. Nice. Um, but yeah, these line up any. Well, you never really played the Game Boy games. Just like any, you would think besides Zelda, that would make a great game that they would reflect on the Switch. No, that that. It's pretty much right there. Yeah. Because you know not a lot of third party. Exactly. So. I'm trying to think of first party titles that Nintendo has the rights to. Well, I remember Konami had a Ninja Turtle, a couple of Ninja Turtle games that were really Their first good. Ninja Turtle game was awesome yeah. on the game. But on I think the Game Boy. the first two, right? Was I'm trying to think one? if I even have the second one, but the Fall of the Foot Clan was fantastic. That I, I remember In fact, that box game. right over there, I know this is a visual, but that box there is all my Game Boy stuff. Oh, wow. So And Game Boy Advance. So it's all shoved in there. <laughs> <laughs> but something like Alleyway. You know, that's right, a version right, of yeah. Breakout, you know, stuff like that. I'm trying to think what I even have on the 3DS, because that really would help, because uh, that means they already have, I guess, license for them. And maybe some of the earlier Mega Man games, not as much Mega Man 5, but as much as the earlier. But um, I, I would be totally excited for the Game Boy on there. You know, I was telling Jack before, I keep, every two weeks, I'm looking to purchase a Super Game Boy 2, you know, get that nice blue palette, the blue uh, uh, cart in there. Um, and of course, the only difference is like the run, like like the the clock inside of it, so it runs like a normal Game Boy. I didn't know it when I was twelve. Am I going to know it forty one? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so who knows? And then to hook up to here's the best thing about the Super Game Boy too. And then we can start to wrap up for you, so you're not late for where you got to go. The Super Game Boy two allowed you to link a Game Boy to it. Yep. So you, so one person would be playing on the Game Boy, the other yeah. person would be playing on the television. Not sure how fair that is. <laughs> yeah, I think the guy on the TV has a little bit of an advantage. <laughs> just, a little, just a little bit. You know just, I mean? just, just a, a tad. Bit. Just a tad. If you squint really hard, the Game Boy guy. <laughs> you know? um, all right, like I said, Jack, I don't want you to be late. I know you got somewhere to go. So, um, 10, 15 more minutes. Okay, yeah. no, that works then. That's fine. Um, you know, I'm trying to think some other news that we've been seeing happening here. Um, I mean, mostly this is going to be a Nintendo episode because this is the only website I'm looking at. Uh, <laughs> says the guy who bought like all these Master System you know what? games right now. All right, so why don't you go through what you got today? Why, you fine, fine. Hopefully my mother's not listening. So <laughs> I, I did get a lot of. I could have just bought the Voltron, you know. In all honesty, um, through recommendation of both you guys, I picked up NHL '94 for the Sega CD. Rich will be proud. No, it's a very, <laughs> it's a very good version of the game. 
has a couple extras. I do notice a slight difference in animation. Mm-hmm. It better be know? if it's a CD and, version. And a lot of people consider 94 the best in the, the series of that that age. Mm-hmm. That nine, 94 was the high point of the... Although I have heard more recently and, and through these YouTube videos that some of the later versions of NHL were really good, like 97, 98. Oh, probably, yeah. Like they won't... You know, now you can purchase NHL 94, but it's got the current rosters. I've heard but that. it plays yeah, like NHL. That. No, no, for real. Oh, it plays really? like, and my buddy plays it all the time. That's it's NHL '94, but current roster. And didn't NHL put out like a one of the newer versions where you can play using like the old graphics? No, that's what I'm talking about. I think you. Ha- I think I don't think it's standalone. I think you have to right. buy NHL '22. Right, but that's, that's what I it's like a you. bonus like that you, works with yeah. it, and it '94, but with current current yeah. roster. That's amazing. So I, I always like. Uh, NHL PA 93. That's my favorite of all time. NHL PA 93 for Genesis. But most huh. uh, most of my friends who play who played hockey for real and love the NHL and, and they always preferred 94. The world says 94. Wasn't 94 in Morats? Zero, the one zero auto goalie. Though. <laughs> Turn that off as soon as you get in the game. Will do. I picked up a new... Um, Tiger Electronics has... Re- and this is from a couple years ago, but I just picked one up now. Uh, release. Oh, these aren't even rechargeable. I got to put batteries in them. Oh, man. So retro. Tiger Electronics. The disappointment <laughs> begins before you even take it out of the box. Tiger Electronics Transformers G2. That's just for fun. That's just going to be for fun. I didn't even see you pick that up. Um, for the Atari, Towering Inferno. That looked like an interesting game. And to be fair, I really didn't even get a chance to play a lot of it, so I don't even know what it's going to be like. Look fun. But we'll give it a shot. Looked like fun. Yeah, Looks yeah, like fun. Yeah, that looked good. Uh, thanks to Patman QC on, uh, on um, YouTube, who's been doing a six-part, soon-to-be part seven release of Batman Returns games, literally Batman Returns, I picked up for Game Gear. Batman Returns, which I remember loving playing this game. And I got it in box. Yeah. Kind of. And I think the Mega SG has an adapter mm-hmm. for the Game Gear. I never never played the Game Gear. Oh, duh, absolutely. I, I haven't. No. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yep. so you're golden. Yep. Uh, I know we talked about the Genesis and Sega CD versions. Yeah, Batman I played Returns it this morning. Today. I wasn't happy with it. Yeah, you just... I kind of forgot. With, with the Sega CD, the only thing worthwhile about it is the driving sequences. And they're yeah. probably dated by today's that's standards. Eh, that's okay, the, the platforming even then... I always thought it was awful. You know, I had the Sunsoft Batman Genesis. Yes. One which it was no I don't think it was as good as the NES ultimately, but it did hew closer to yeah. the movie with the scenes and how yes, it played true. out. Um do, 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 do. Oh, that's an NES I version. remember playing Batman Returns, my cousin had it, got it on the Genesis. I it was one of the first games I can ever remember thinking as a teenager, this is unplayable. <laughs> but the Super wow. Nintendo version is phenomenal. Super Nintendo yeah. version, it's more like Final yeah, Fight. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but uh, also uh, Castlemania, you know, you talk about getting the power base yes. converter. Mm-hmm. Castlemania also, I think, is selling a master system converter for the Game Gear, because the Game Gear is basically a master system. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, that's cool. So pretty interesting. Uh, okay, uh, moving on with all master system, basically, uh, Action Fighter, which again, I love the the reading from the back. Take the motorcycle from Hang On, equip it with high tech weaponry. And give it the ability to transform itself into an aircraft or car, and you've got Spy Hunter. I mean, Action Fighter. I mean, the the one the other selling point about that that they're not going to put on there is that, and basically rip off Spy Hunter completely. Basically, because it's basically Spy Hunter on the Master System. Um, I picked up, and again, this is uh, Retro Retro Sutra, which I follow. Did a great compilation of Ghostbuster games, and. Again, Mario has mentioned this in the past, but the Master System version of Ghostbusters looks like the best one of all. I find it to be the only playable one. And hopefully it doesn't have the like the NES opening. Ghostbusters. I don't think it did. I think it just played the theme. And I think what I think happens is you'll see the lyrics scroll across at the bottom of the bouncing ball. I think that's what it did. But graphically it looks nice. It the controls are a little more forgiving than the NES version. And uh, it's just it's just a better made version of, of that, which is like you know you, you go to each spot you capture ghosts you make some money you buy equipment like a franchise kind of game you know uh, of course because um, I have the adapter for the Sega card so I picked up my second card game uh, Ghost House Ghost House which looks interesting I gotta know how those card games are I never we'll, we'll try one. in a little while yeah. Yeah, look at that check that yeah. out and then I picked up actually only because I like the box. You know, the, the Famicom games had some good boxes, and sometimes you think yeah. it's one of those porno games, but it's not. Uh, Namcot Final Lap, which looks like um, 
Well, it looks like final. Lap. All those boxes so. were like that on the Famicom. Not all Marcy of them. Brand. No, no, that's, that's they were. Were they cardboard? Like no. Yeah, that, that kind of reminds me of the yep. Sega boxes in a way. It does. Or you like know, it's a hard plastic. Old VHS ones. Remember those really fancy yes. ones? Yes, yeah. clamshell. Yeah. Um, no, no, because I have some boxed uh, uh, Famicom games over there. And they're just right, regular right, box right. games. But I figured pick that up because, like I said, it, it just looked pretty interesting. Um, other than that, that's basically about it on my haul. As usual, I go way too crazy. What was the one that you had to put back? Oh yes. Oh, that was um. The the fight the the military game, a rescue mission. Rescue, rescue mission. mission. Right. So I was gonna pick up rescue mission for again for the master system. Looks amazing. Basically, you're on a rail system the entire time. We looked it up on um, YouTube. It looked pretty cool. And yes, you probably could use a cartridge. Right. But when right. we went to ring it up, Jay was like, "Oh, please play this on a CRT screen." So in my head, I'm like, "No, I don't have a CRT. I have a regular <laughs> yeah. television. What do you want from me?" And then he just casually, because I didn't even know, I didn't even read the box fully. See, I th- he, he's like, on. he's yeah. like, yeah, well, you know, because of the light gun. I'm like, what? The light gun game. I All right, I got to put that back on the shelf. I thought I grabbed that box, looked at it. I thought it said controller pad. You probably could mm. use it, but again, if you got to use a controller pad Maybe or a light a gun, exactly. It's like Punisher on NES. Ugh. Exactly. No controller pad. Is there really a good Punisher game besides the arcade game? I don't really. think so, man. And I never even really played the arcade game. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know uh, I've heard the Genesis adaptation's not that great. I might have played the arcade yeah. game at, at uh, Barcade, I'm trying to think. I don't remember. But uh, that was my whole... Uh, Jack, did you end up with anything? Yeah, I bought a Wii U Pro Controller again. There you go. Because mine broke. There you go. Um, not through its own fault. I <laughs> ran it over with something that I shouldn't have. Oh. <laughs> so, wow. All right. And I picked up some weird... Uh, he rage quitted. Yeah, he just rage quitted. <laughs> with the trailblazer. Um, <laughs> oh, that, is, that is rage quitting. That is commitment Anthony to Anthony has quitting. told the story of whipping the N64 controller, which I was there for, across the room during a game of no mer- WWE No Mercy. And, you know, with the way those N64 controllers are, it could kill someone. Yeah. And, I mean, he chucked it. It might have been bedded into the wall. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> but running the Trailblazer over a controller, that is that is dedication. So, uh, I'll finish what you've oh. got, and then I'll tell <laughs> my rage story. One yeah. more was uh, a little bit, a little drawing pad app. That thing is really Wii. cool, though. Yeah, it just looked cool. It is cool. You draw it. Yeah. You draw. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Pretty cool. You'll hack you'll, you'll hack the hell out of it. So, <laughs> Lord knows what you'll turn it into. <laughs> <laughs> what were you gonna say? Yeah, <laughs> uh, just a, just a little story uh, about rage. I think it was rage quitting. I think only, thank God I got to, got it to work again. But uh, I used to have my stuff when I was a teenager. I lived in Westbury. I had all my stuff in a basement, and I had you know the old TV. It was a Zenith. Yep. There you go. And uh, a magnet. Box. It was in an, one of those old unit pieces, right? So I had my Genesis, and I was getting very frustrated with Mortal Kombat Two, to the point where I. Now, my unit piece was in the middle of the basement room. It wasn't up against the wall. Okay. Okay, so that's oh, kind of an weird. Important... Okay. I split the room in half. Gotcha, gotcha. You know what I mean? Like, I had my bed on one side, and I had yeah. a game room and a guest room gotcha. for others, right? So, um, I got so mad, I threw my controller to the floor, and I karate kicked the TV... <laughs> Which went through the panel. This was a 19-inch TV, so you know it had a little weight to it. <laughs> through the panel, and it, I heard a big pop, oh, and it hit the floor. Now, the TV still miraculously worked. The plastic was a little split at the bottom. <laughs> and what was happening, af- from that day afterwards, I couldn't get the remote to work, so I had to manually turn it off. Oh. And every time I hit the power button, I'd get an arc flash. <laughs> I think the grounding broke, and I would get zapped every time I turned that damn thing off. It lasted me a long time after that, but it was never quite the Still same. Still had it. I lost to uh, the constant memory. Of yeah, a loss. I think I was using reptile, and I lost to the guy with the uh, with the with the teeth and the, the knives for hands. Oh, the Baraka. Baraka. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was. Uh... <laughs> You got a toasty out of it. Yeah, I got toasty. Well. Right. Yeah, but I remember kicking that. <laughs> Fantastic, <laughs> rage quitting, folks. All the rage. Oh, that's the last thing I want to mention, just real fast. So, um, and then we'll we'll wrap it up. The Atari VCS. I posted this earlier today. Oh yeah. Uh, this is just kind of for the three of you out there, besides me, who have an Atari VCS. <laughs> Um, apparently there are three new apps on it for free that you can download because through the Atari VCS, you can now play the Amazon Luna. You can play Google Stadia and you can play Xbox cloud gaming. Uh, I think that is pretty interesting and might Hmm. be a very big selling point for the Atari VCS in my opinion. You know what? I'm curious in your, your expert opinion, uh, 
Jack about the VCS. Before you go, have him turn it on and listen to that fan go. They kind of fixed it. They oh, kind of, not really? like the oh, very first time. Because when he first got it and we were playing it, that fan was going, it was going. I thought it was going to take off. It was yeah. a hot, hot Yeah, I, I think through a, a, a firmware upgrade, they so kind of was able to fix that everything. that lessened? I think it did, okay. yeah. I what is it, an FPGA device or what is it? No, I don't, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I don't, mm, I don't think so because it doesn't take any physical media. Hmm. So I think it's just, it is what it is, but the fan was so loud. But I think, again, I think they kind of fixed it. In post, <laughs> if yeah. you will, because hmm. um, yeah, that first actually I do have a video of it. I was sitting across the room. He just yeah, it was very loud. like I thought the thing oh, was going to blow. Oh, honestly, it was it was crazy. But uh, yeah, apparently uh, now you can play uh, Google Stadia, Amazon Luna for the four of you out there, and uh, <laughs> Xbox Cloud Gaming. So uh, now a reason to buy an Atari VCS. So nice. With that, I think we'll wrap it up. Like I said, it's going to be a short episode, and with no uh, no video, it'll be very boring to watch. A very mm -hmm. long episode, so uh, we'll call it at this point. Uh, Jack, do you have anything? I don't know if you promote anything or, or whatever you want. Nope. No? As usual. Just awesome. Me. I like it. Mario, anything? I promote you guys. Listen in on these guys. All right, fantastic. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, follow us everywhere. Just do a search for the Retro Gamers Podcast on Stalk Instagram, them. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram TV. Which, if you find us on Instagram will be Instagram TV. Uh, again, just search Retro Gamers Podcast. Email us. Email at theretrogamers.com. Remember, if you have an unpopular opinion, send it on in. We'll talk about it. If you have a uh, an oddball game that you remember, something you know, kind of out of the blue, let us know about that as well. And uh, Mario, uh, Billy, uh, Ryan, uh, Reynold, <laughs> Jack, thank you very much, both of you, for joining me on this episode. Really no, no appreciate problem. it. It was fun good. today, man. It was yeah, a good time. For today. No, absolutely. And uh, folks, with that, we will catch you next week on the Retro Gamers Podcast.